Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca and I am a stay-at-home mom and an online reseller. And today is going to be another pregnancy-related video. I know I haven't been making a lot of reselling videos lately, but honestly, pregnancy has kind of overtaken my life at the moment. So that's the content I have. And I am a mom slash reselling slash lifestyle kind of channel. Also, totally forgot a tripod or anything to hold my phone, which is what I'm recording on. So sorry if it's a little bit like... Blair Witch Project. I just don't have anything to put my phone on. I'm just holding it. And I'm in the car because I'm a busy mom and this is the only time I had to record. But today's video is going to be, um, I don't have like a set number, but it's going to be things that I'm going, things that I'm doing differently or going to be doing differently and things that I'm doing are going to be doing the same this pregnancy and with this third baby. So if you're just joining me, Hi, welcome. Love to have you subscribe and stick around for more pregnancy related videos, which is what we're doing a lot of right now. I have two kids, an almost five year old, a two and a half year old, and I am pregnant with our third, which is due in 15 weeks. <laughs> um, so due right about Thanksgiving 2023. But we're going to just jump into this video and talk about these few things. I am in my car, like I said, and it is hot, but I have it turned off so it's not so loud. So I'm going to do this before I fry. <laughs> okay, so first we're going to start with the things that I plan on doing the same. So one of the biggest things is newborn sleeping arrangements. So we plan on doing this the same way that we've done it with, well, definitely our last baby and kind of sorted with our first. We were in a different house with our first child, so um, our whole house setup was kind of different. But we do not uh, co-sleep and we do not bed share. I know people kind of use those like everything is co-sleeping, but um, when they're in the bed with you, that's bed sharing and co-sleeping is when they're like in the same room as you, as far as I'm aware. Either way, we don't do either of those things. Uh, the baby never sleeps in our room. The baby is in their own room from day one, um, preferably in the crib. <laughs> if, if they will stay in the crib, we also have a swing that's worked for both of our other babies because they both had reflux, kind of anticipating the same with this one, but we will see. Um, and the reason we do this is, I mean, for one thing, I don't know why, I just feel more comfortable uh, not like laying down in a bed. I like to be reclined even like normally I have like three pillows. It's just the way I like to sleep. So instead of having like a nursery rocker or something, we have a recliner in the nursery. It's still in there. It's been in there since um, second baby. And I prefer to sleep in that um, for like the first week or so. And I can easily access uh, the baby because they're right there. Um, and just in their crib, it's kind of easy to try to start from the crib. We don't have bassinet or anything like that. Um, and also because like my husband is either working or taking care of the other kids and the way, just the way, and everyone does things differently, but the way we do things, it just doesn't make sense for us to have him woken up in the middle of the night as well when I'm the one who has to take care of the baby, um, especially with nursing or pumping or whatever the case is. So there's just really, feels like there's no point for, um, yeah, for him to be woken up as well. And there's no way he's going to sleep through a baby crying in the middle of the night. I know a lot of people like to have the bedside best next and they're like, I don't have to get up. But I'm like, I have to get up and go to the bathroom, especially with all the postpartum stuff going on. Um, I have to get up and go to the bathroom like every time the baby needs to be fed anyway. So sleeping arrangements, we're going to do the same thing um, unless something crazy happens. But I don't see, like I said, we don't even own a bassinet. So I don't see anything else changing there. The other thing we're going to do the same, or, or I plan on doing the same, is baby wearing. I did wear both of my other babies. Um, I have a boba wrap that I like for when they're newborns. I do want to try a different wrap this time. Um, I want to try, I think it's Boppy makes it. I'm not sure. They have a couple different ones, but it's kind of like a structured, a soft structured carrier mixed with a wrap. Um, and I mostly want to do that because as much as I do like the boba wrap, it is a ton of fabric and I don't have trouble tying it, but it's just kind of cumbersome, especially going out somewhere. Um, I have a Lila baby wrap for when they're, or carrier for when they're bigger, but in those newborn stages, I kind of want something that's a little bit quicker, easier, a little bit less fabric since I had two other kids to take care of. So I'm hoping to find one secondhand. We'll see how that goes. Uh, nursing. I do plan to try to nurse this baby. I've been unsuccessful in my other two nursing journeys, 
but I do plan to try again and I am hoping to be successful the third time around. We will see what happens, but our other two ended up on formula and they had the reflux before the formula started. So that wasn't because of the formula. <laughs> um, and they both were able to still have breast milk that I had collected for a, a decent amount of time because I tend to produce a lot right in the beginning. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that, but that is the plan. Uh, baby bump photos. So I've been taking my bump photos once every four weeks, which is what I've done with the other kids. So it's fun. I can compare my bump. My bump feels way bigger this time. I am 25 weeks and one day today. So I have been uh, taking my bump photos and I'm going to continue to do that until, until I have this baby. <laughs> white noise. We did not use white noise with our first baby and I don't think it really mattered but we didn't have like dogs barking. We didn't have any other children. So our home was relatively quiet. We had a two-story home so the baby all the bedrooms and stuff were upstairs and we could be downstairs. So um, that was fine but the second baby we did use white noise and we still kind of use white noise for the kids today um, because mostly because of the way our house is set up. The kids are currently, the older kids are sleeping in the bedroom that's going to be the nursery. And it is on the main floor right next to the kitchen, right next to the main bathroom. It's right around everything. So it gets kind of loud. Um, and I do think white noise helps. I do not really advocate for or plan to put the white noise directly next to my baby's head. I do not use it all the time. I don't like lean on it, but for nighttime and naps, um, I do plan to use that just like when we're out and about so much i just want the baby to get kind of used to like everyday noises i don't want it to be like every single time the baby fusses to give them white noise that's just how i like to do it so yes we will be using white noise again with this baby a pacifier i will be attempting to give this baby a pacifier <laughs> Um, first child took a pacifier, loved the pacifier. We had to wean him from his wubba nub and weaning was fine, but we did have to do that. Second baby didn't take a pacifier, didn't suck her thumb. Now she's two and a half and she sucks on her hair, which is unfortunate because, uh, we even cut it shorter unintentionally and, um, she still sucks on it. So <laughs> it kind of, it, she couldn't suck on it for a while because it was too short, but now it's grown back out a little bit and she sucks on it when she's sleeping. She doesn't do it like while she's awake or anything. So uh, there's not a whole lot to do. Not, not, not a whole lot we can do about that. Um, but I am going to try the pacifier with this baby. And honestly, I think that'd be easier than having a thumb sucker or <laughs> a hair sucker because at least the pacifier you can wean off of. And the last thing that I'm doing the same this time around is buying baby clothes. So we actually didn't necessarily intend to have a third baby. Originally, we didn't know what we were going to do. And we got to a point where we didn't think we would have a third. So my parents had a yard sale and I took a bunch of baby clothes over there and sold a whole bunch of baby clothes, mostly sizes like newborn to like 12 months, like the whole first year, basically. So um, I had to rebuy. I'm like in the process of rebuying all this clothes. I buy pretty much everything secondhand or on clearance. So mostly secondhand though. If you watch some of my other videos, um, you'll see like baby haul videos and stuff. You can see some of those items, but I definitely like to um, buy them secondhand because they're gonna outgrow them. So I am rebuying um, what we need. I do have an inventory list. So I have, I know what we need. And I just know like, I know what types of clothing items I want for my kids. Like I don't need any pants for newborns because they're just going to be in sleepers. Um, and I am also buying some preemie clothes this time around because we don't know this baby could be a little bit early. So she may need preemie clothes. So I'm collecting a couple of those items as well. Whew, okay, it is getting hot and my face is probably going to get more and more red because of the heat and the sun, but we're going to crank out these things I'm doing differently this time around. First thing, diapers. I cloth diapered my first son for his first year until we had an issue. Then we had to switch to disposable diapers. Um, my second child, I did cloth diaper her a little bit in the beginning, but she was super, super sensitive no matter what I did. Um, and we even had to try a couple different disposable diaper brands till we found one that she wasn't reacting to. Third baby, we don't even have cloth diapers anymore. I've already sold them. <laughs> We're just gonna do disposables. My kids just seem to have really sensitive skin. The disposables seem to work best. 
Um, and we'll probably do like Love's brand. We try to do the cheapest we can with out it uh, irritating our kids. So my first son, we did Parents' Choice, the Walmart brand, and he was fine. But my daughter, she couldn't couldn't handle those. So we went up a step to Love's, and they've been working. For, they had worked great. She's probably trained now, but they worked great for her. So we'll probably just do um, Love's and you know Pampers or whatever people maybe if people give us stuff or if we get stuff from the hospital, Huggies, whatever. I don't care. As long as it doesn't give the baby a rash, I'm fine with it. But this is going to be the first time buying newborn diapers, which is going to be crazy because I've never had the little tiny newborn ones that I bought. I mean, we got them from the hospital, but never ones that I bought to be like, oh, they're so tiny and, you know, fill a whole drawer with them. We've never done that. So that'll be fun to do. Next thing is for postpartum. These are all kind of out of order, so I apologize for that. They're just things I've jotted down as I've gone. But postpartum, I've noticed that I tend to, like with a last baby, I really kind of like locked myself in the nursery a lot. Um, I want to try to be out more in the common space postpartum. I know there's going to be a time of healing and like I just need to rest and sleep. I can't really do that <laughs> around a, an almost five or he, he will be five, a five-year-old and a two-year-old very well. Um, so I'm sure I'm going to need to be back in the room with just me and the baby, but I do want to try to spend more of my awake time out about with, um, like just in the living room, just not cooped up in the room. Cause I think that's also going to be better for my mental health. We will see how that goes, but that's my plan. A car seat. Another thing we've never done is bought an infant car seat. I actually have our car seats back here. So that's my Otis and this is my youngest. We've always done convertible car seats straight from the beginning, and then I just baby wore or we put them directly in a stroller from the car, and that was completely fine. We are not a family that goes out much. We don't go out to eat, really. We just don't really go a lot of places that we would need um, a bucket seat. We don't use daycare because I stay at home, things like that. So this time around, we are going to buy, well, usually my in-laws, um, they always offer to buy the car seat, which is super kind of them. So <clears throat> we're going to get like an infant bucket seat this time because um, my son, he goes to preschool and he's gonna be involved in other activities. And I take the other kids to the library and stuff. And I think it's going to be much easier to just lift a car seat with the baby in it out to run him five minutes or less into preschool, drop him off and come back out, rather than trying to unbuckle the baby, put the baby in a wrap, go inside, come back out, take the baby back out of the wrap. I think just the bucket seat's gonna work better because we are going out more naturally just because we have more kids. So that's going to be a different thing. We're learning all about all that stuff now. The next thing is freezer meals. I did not do freezer meals with the other two kids. With our first kid, we just didn't really feel it was necessary. He was our first kid. My husband could just cook because um, he did have some uh, paternity leave or family leave, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with the second kid, I kind of asked him, do you want me to make freezer meals? And he said, no. Third kid, I think we decided we're going to just have to have some freezer meals um, stocked away. So... I think my mom is going to help me sort that out when we get closer to time. If you have good freezer meal recipes, let me know. The, um, I've kind of looked a little bit, but the hard thing is, aside from our family being a little bit picky, we don't have allergies, but I am lactose intolerant, and a lot of freezer meals have cheese in them, and I can't do the cheese. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, we had to figure out uh, how to go around that, but... Uh, I do plan to find some freezer meals and have some of that stuff prepped this time around. My pregnancy app. I am using the same pregnancy app that I used for the last two kids. The difference is I don't really look at it that much this time around. I don't feel like I need to like learn everything. If I'm bored, I'll scroll through it. Um, other than that, I just check in on it once a week when my week turns over and get a little, you know, baby update to my husband and we can be like, oh, this is how big the baby is now and, you know, all that. And my son likes that too. So, we are doing that, but I'm not like tracking anything in it or anything like that. I'm just much more lax. I'm not really tracking much of anything this time around. I've talked about this in one of my pregnancy update videos, but weighing myself. I am not weighing myself this pregnancy. The doctor's office weighs me. I have no problem looking at the weight. It doesn't bother me. Um, I just don't feel the need to like keep track of my weight. I just don't really care. I just know I'm like, I'm eating when I'm hungry. I'm not eating when I'm not hungry. I'm eating, you know, trying to eat as well as I can, you know, but also eating kind of what I want and just dealing with it. If there's an issue, I'm sure the doctors will bring it up to me, but I've never had an issue with the other two. And it's just kind of silly to be like, 
oh, I haven't gained anything in these couple weeks, and then you feel like you gained 10 pounds. And that's just how pregnancy goes sometimes, so I'm not worrying about it, just not dealing with that. Uh, the other thing is going to be skin to skin. I did do skin to skin with my other kids, but I feel like I could have done more. I want to do more with this baby. We will see how that goes given the whole trying to be out in common spaces more. And it'll be like November, so it'll be pretty cold. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes, but I do want to try to do more skin to skin. I think that'll be better for both me and the baby and hopefully help the nursing journey go a little bit better as well. Lowering my expectations. This is a really hard one. I have a lot of trouble with this because I am the one who basically runs the household day to day because my husband works, I stay at home, and I like things done the way I like them done. I like things put away where I want them put away so I know where they are. Um, and I'm quite OCD in general anyway. I like I do have like legit <laughs> issues when things don't quite go right. So in like my last pregnancy, I even like wrote out an entire chart of how to do the laundry, what settings to use, and all of that. I'm just not even messing with it this time. I'll write down a few things that people need to know, um, you know, the necessary things or like, you know, when my son goes to preschool and stuff like that, like what days and times he needs to be there. But the day-to-day -day stuff in the house, I just, I'm really going to just have to lower my expectations, let it go and trust that my husband's going to hopefully clean something uh, before he goes back to work. I don't know. Um, but yeah, in general, just trying to lower my expectations about all that. Going to the chiropractor. I have gone to the chiropractor with my last two pregnancies. I actually am sitting in the parking lot of my chiropractor's office because I just went in. And the difference here is that in my last two pregnancies, I waited until I had an issue. It was sciatica in both of them. This time, I this is my third appointment. I've gone basically once a month for the last few months. And um, I wanted to start going before I ever had any issues to hopefully keep the issues from coming on as badly. Um, I haven't had any sciatic pain really yet this pregnancy. I just went in after not having been there for three or four weeks and she said I looked a lot better than I did the last time. So I think uh, it's working just to be proactive. I definitely recommend chiropractic care if you're able to during pregnancy especially because that extra weight just really throws off your whole like your hips and your back and your legs and all that. So uh, chiropractic care doing the same chiropractic care I did last time, just starting it earlier and being proactive with it. And the last thing on my list, while I am sweating up a storm, this is probably horrible, but my last thing is this time I want to get a manual breast pump. I have the Hakas, I don't really count that as a manual breast pump, but um, I have a regular Spectra pump that I had for my first pregnancy. I have, I think it's Free Me Cups that I got with my second pregnancy. This time, I, I mean, I'll probably order one of those as well, but I think um, the manual ones are only like 30 bucks or something. I literally want one of just like the hand ones where you just put it on there and you just pump it yourself. Um, and I want this because when I do have trouble breastfeeding, last time when I had trouble with it, it was frustrating because then I was like, well, I still want to feed my baby milk. And then I had to try to get the pump set up and like I really had trouble with getting the free me cup sorted and it just never really worked for me. And I'm like, I just want something simple and quick that I can go to when I need. It doesn't mean I won't use the other pumps, but I want to make sure I have one of these manual pumps just to like quickly put on, get the milk out if I feel like I need a break or if I feel like I need to and move on with my life and I can address the other issues later. <laughs> so um, that's definitely on my list of things I want to do this time around. And that is pretty much everything. I am dying of heat right now. So I'm going to wrap this up so I can turn the air conditioning back on. But that is everything. I'm doing the same. We're doing different. I mean, not everything. I'm sure there's a million other things, but this is just a list I kind of compiled. So let me know if these are things that you guys also do with your babies or have done or planning to do, or what are some of the things that you plan to do differently with your subsequent children or pregnancies. If you enjoyed this video, pre please give it a like. <laughs> And uh, subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Come back for more mom life reselling um, lifestyle kind of content. I'm sure I'll have more baby videos coming in the future. Um, and you can also follow me over on Instagram. I am at the Cozy Shire and we can connect over there. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.